fall because you were clumsy, mm -hmm. or you could fall because the landlord did something. And when you're suing for it, you got to prove it's the landlord did something. This is the plaintiff, Rachel Eckert. She says the defendant was the landlord from you nowhere. She had all sorts of problems with him. Lost her job because of him and is suing the louse here and now for the $5,000 he's cost her. That's right. You mess with her, she's going to do what she needs to do to get her money back. And if that means taking him to court, then so be it. This is the defendant, Michael Hurley. He says the plaintiff was always getting into tussles with the neighbors. He had her arrested for stealing and she stopped paying the rent. This is simply a case of a tenant trying to milk the system. He's learned a great lesson about being a landlord and thinks the judge is going to side with him on this one when she hears all the evidence. He's accused of lousy landlording. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $2,650 for unpaid rent and lawyer's fees. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated and come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, okay. Man. Rachel Eckert? Yes. You are suing your former landlord, Michael Hurley? Yeah, that's correct. For $5,000 that you say he owes you from your security deposit, pain and suffering, exterminator costs, podiatry costs. I can't wait. You have a counterclaim against her for $26.50 for three months rent and lawyer's fees to get her evicted. All right. What's going on? Okay. Um, I had moved into Mr. Hurley's apartment in October of 2013 on the 25th. Prior to moving in, when I was moving my stuff in, I had fell down the stairs in the front hallway. Um, I had to go to the emergency room, and I had a fractured bone in the top of my foot, and I had to go see a podiatrist for it. Okay. To this day, I still get edema in my foot. I've been treated okay, for How is that his fault? Um, because there was a light in the hallway, but it didn't always work because there was a short end. Did it work when you fell? No, it wasn't on. Okay, you lived there for how many months after that? For about a year and... Two months. Okay, because it's a little suspicious that you complain about it now. Well, I said something to him about it at first, but when I had first moved in, I was worried that if I told him I was going to go after his homeowner's insurance, that he was going to put me right out, and I couldn't be put okay. out when I had just moved into an apartment. Okay. Do you have any proof that the light wasn't working? No, I mean, because... Because you could fall because you were clumsy, mm -hmm. or you could fall because the landlord did something. And when you're suing for it, you got to prove it's the landlord did something. Yeah. All right, so go on. Um, in July, the people upstairs had got a dog, and they never cleaned up after it. It went basically to the bathroom in the back... Um, driveway and every time I would go outside to take my garbage out I would either step in it or my car was back there so I was always stepping in it. Did you ever complain to him? Yes and I have text messages. Okay can I see the text messages? Did you not get along with those folks? Um, there was a few problems that we had with the driveway because the we both were kind of trying to park in there and it wasn't working out very well. Okay. Um, Who has a right to park back there? I was, Whoever gets there first? I was nice, and I let them park both their cars that was unregistered and uninsured back there at the oh, time. Oh, so it's not cars they're using so every day? Usually, I wouldn't let them. I was nice and let them get it off the street, and it backfired on me. Yeah. Because uh, exactly. they started fighting it. Was your car unregistered? Yes. It did get unregistered at one point in time. And was the other uh, tenant's car unregistered? Correct. And I do have notice from the code inspector that the cars were unregistered. Yours so too? You called your code inspector on your side? I didn't, no, I didn't call him. He came out for other reasons. He came out for the unsanitary conditions. Did there you have to pay a, fee, a fine for that? No. Oh, yeah, she definitely called the code inspector. She called everybody she can think of on me. When did she do that? Uh, it didn't start until after I told her she couldn't get a dog, and ever since then everything went sour, and um, 
So there was a leak on the roof and I came and fixed, I fixed the leak on the roof and asked her to move her car because the city inspector was asking me to move them because they were both unregistered. She refused to move her car and I told her I'd have to give her 30 day notice and get the car towed if she didn't move it. Uh, that's when she called the cops and said I was harassing her and had me and I had to leave my own house because she wanted to get me arrested. So let's back up a second. When, when and why did you tell her she had to go? Uh, because she refused to move her car and I was going to get fined for it. And but, but and right. But what made you at what tipped you off to that you were going to get fined for it? I got a letter from the city. inspector. OK, so she's already mad when she calls the yeah, city. on yeah. you. All right. So back up a little more and tell me why she's calling the city on you. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with me not letting her to get, get a dog. OK. All right, so you're suing for your... When did you end up leaving? I left December 15th. Okay, and you're, you left December 15th because you were evicted. I agreed in landlord court that I didn't want to stay right. there. and you were in landlord court on what kind of lawsuit? It wasn't a lawsuit. He sent me a 30-day notice in September while I was still current with my rent. He just didn't want me staying there because did I Did you have a file. lease? Uh, it was a month-to-month. -month. Right, so he can do that. Go on. Correct. But I have... I had filed complaints with the health department because there was sewage. When was your up. first, when did you file the 30 day notice? Uh, I think it was around September 19th and I just asked her to leave. Do you by. have the notice? Yes, I do. Okay. Was it September 19th? It could have been September 19th. Okay. Let me see the notice. When did you file the first complaint? In August. Prove that. While she's looking for that, you filed a 30 day notice on September 17th, telling her she has till October 31st, so you were giving her more than 30 days. And when you do that, does she get out on October 31st? No, she, that's the date, that's the first date, the first time I got a text message about the sewage was on October 31st, the day she was supposed to leave. She claims that she had brought um, problems to your attention prior to that. The only thing I heard about was um, the, the feces. Yes, what she did was she filed a complaint with the Erie County Department of Health Rabies Disease and Vector Control Program inspection form. Notice issued to both lower, upper, and lower occupants. And then probably this is the day that they also find you both for the car, or cited you both for the cars? No, it was a different day. Oh. I have the notice. So basically the upstairs tenant got a warning and you got a warning too. Yes. Interesting. Tell me when your first complaint about the landlord and not the actions of the tenants happens. The answer is then it's after it he tells after. you you have to go. Correct. That's when you say, uh, I broke my foot, he owes me money. That's when you say, I have pain and suffering. That's when you say, ooh, $1,200 for lost wages. What's that about? Um, because... When the plumbing problem started, he refused. What plumbing problems? There was raw sewage that was coming up through the bathtub and the toilet, and I have pictures and I have documentation from the health department. When did that all happen? That happened in October. After you've already been asked to leave? Correct. Why would you want to stay in a place that's like that? I was in the process of looking for somewhere else to move, but I was also about seven months pregnant. So when I was looking for apartments, it was kind of hard because a lot of people were asking me, well, what are you going to do when you have the baby? And just nobody really called yeah. me back. Okay. Show me the pictures of the raw sewage and talk to me about the raw sewage. Tell me what's I going on. I have them on. in my phone and only two of them that were printed out. This okay, I'll the see the ones phone. on your phone. Get them up in your phone. What is this a picture of? That's the bathtub. Okay. How does this water have all that sewage in it? What are, you, what are you saying is happening there? It backed up. It backed up to that extent? Yes. All the way up like that? Yes, ma'am. When we would flush the toilet, it wouldn't flush, so we tried plumbing it, and then it would start coming up through the bathtub. Who's we? Me and my sister. Um, and what do you say about this? What's your response? My response was that it didn't happen until after she was supposed to be out the house. Okay, and then what did you do to fix it, though? I couldn't fix it while she was in there because I, I, I couldn't be around her. My lawyer told me to stay away from her after she tried that to call That doesn't mean your lawyer can't tell you that you, all of a sudden you don't have obligations as a landlord. That's crazy. You still have to do what you're supposed to do. I just didn't have the money, man. I got it. Your Honor. So what, do you think she sabotaged this? Because that's what you said in your complaint. I think she put something down the drain. I can't, but I you can't don't know prove that. it. All right, and what are these pictures of bed bugs? Yes. How are the bed bugs his fault? Because I, I told him about it. He refused to eradicate them. Did he bring he bugs me, into your house? He didn't bring them in there. Okay. I haven't, I mean, as far as I know, I, I can't say that I brought them in there. I can't say that anybody else brought them in there. I don't know how they got there. Right. Because I guess, that's the problem with bed bugs is that the, you don't know how they got there. He doesn't know how they got there. I don't know how they got there. Only the bed bugs know how they got there. <laughs>
and the bed bugs ain't talking. So, but you want him to pay $850 for two beds? I had to throw them out. Yeah, you actually brought them to your new apartment before you threw them out, right? Yes. Okay, got it. You're suing for a couch and two beds. What's the couch for, same reason? I had to throw the couch out. I left it at the old house. I didn't bring it with did me. Did you throw it out or did you leave it for him to throw out? I couldn't lift it up. I was, I was like seven months pregnant. No, I time. know, you got yourself pregnant. I'm sorry, <laughs> it doesn't mean somebody else has to move your stuff around. Well, it means that you have trouble. I was gonna, I okay, was gonna Okay, so get now I have a question for you. Listen to me, because this is the last thing I need to go over and then I need to give the floor to him. I want to understand the lost wages. The lost wages was because when the sewage happened, I wasn't able to shower at all, so I called off for two days in a row. Why would you call off from work? Why don't you just go to a friend's house and take a shower? Because everybody knew about the bed bugs, and honestly, nobody really wanted me over there. <laughs> so I was kind of like in a catch-22. So, so someone should pay you $1,200 because you didn't pay $39 for a motel. Well, motel all right, let me hear were... from you. What's going on here? She's um, mad because of the dog. Uh, first, that's when I first started. Next thing you know, she uh, she she went from calling the inspector on me to calling CPS on the people upstairs. Did you call CPS on the? Did you call Child Protective Services? On I the called people Child upstairs? Protection Services because they were smoking weed upstairs. That's but the only when was the first time you called, called Child Protection Services? To be honest, I can't tell you when it was. It was after the dog poop, right? You didn't it call may have them. Been. Say it again. It may have been. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I know. There's more to the story too. She actually she got me in trouble for shared metering, which is the, with the electric company. Yeah, you can't and, do that. And uh, she, uh, I ended up getting fined. You should like, get in trouble. For I got fined like a thousand dollars because how much? A thousand dollars. Wow. Me. Show me the proof that you got fined a thousand dollars. Tell me the real story behind the thousand dollar fine. Well, you're, you're you're supposed to have. I guess you're supposed to have the lights in the hallway on a third meter. Uh, right. But I didn't know that. I'm. A, this is my first house. I only been a I only been a landlord for a year. Okay. So I don't know all these laws. I'm just telling you everybody she called. She's just trying to get. Do yeah, she that's the beauty of home ownership. <laughs> Not to mention she did steal, she did get arrested for taking the basement door off. The what? Of what? She broke in my basement because I locked her I locked her out of the basement because she unplugged the upstairs tenant's refrigerator that was down Oh, there. you have got to be and, kidding uh, me. Cost them how do you unplug the, how do you, from the basement, unplug the refrigerator? The, the refrigerator. You mean the in, breaker? No, the refrigerator was in the basement because it was too big to go upstairs. But it was on their plug and somehow it got unplugged. She said she didn't do it. So I, I, I did what I had to do and I locked her out of the basement. And so so she couldn't do it again. You locked everybody out of the basement. Oh, uh, you gave the keys gave to the, the top. Guy, the, yeah, I gave a key to the Does she have any reason to be in the basement? Um, just to flip breakers that she that she pops on and off. I mean, this girl lived in my house for a year. And the only complaints I did get from neighbors was traffic going in and out the house all hours of the night, going downstairs, going to her house. So you lock the basement door and someone breaks in? She, she took the door off the hinges and, and hid the door inside the apartment. And I had to come and call. Did you call. find the door in the apartment? The cops found the door in the apartment and arrested her. Did the her cops find the door in the apartment? Yes, they did. And I did you take the door off yes. the hinges? Yes, I did. Well, maybe you could pick up your own sofa then. And it's not, oh, I'm so pregnant. I can't do it. I Are you serious? I had help bringing the door in. And Why? The didn't get help bringing it? The, the reason I took the door off the hinges is that's when the sewage problem was, and after he refused to fix it on three or four separate occasions. Do you have proof that I you notified? Hold on one second. And welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, who generally causes bed bugs, landlords or tenants? I would say the tenant because the property inside the apartment is most likely the tenants, the bed, the couch, things like that. So I would guess that it's the tenant's responsibility. Pretty compelling. What do you think? I agree with her. Like, if you're not clean, you're causing it. We're going for the tenant or the landlord? The landlord, because they have to keep the facility clean, and if they're not, do not doing that, then the tenant can't keep it clean as well, and it'll continue to grow. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. Do you have proof that you notified him of the sewage problem? Yes, I do. Yeah, I want to see that. But go ahead, so the reason you stole the I, landlord's door. I, I took it off because I was trying to get my own plumber in there to fix it. I had called. Why, what would, why would the plumber need to get into the basement because to fix it? Because it was, because as far as everybody told me, I had already called the city plumber and they said that it wasn't the main sewage line. It had to have been something underneath the house. All right, so now here's a text between you guys. Okay, fine. Building inspector's coming by on Monday. This is what you texted him on October 31st. I'll just share him the message. And I will leave when the courts issue an eviction. If I can't go to work, I'll lose my job, and you will be in the Supreme Court for intentional infliction of emotional distress. I don't have time for your pettiness. Anytime there was something wrong, you said you can't afford to fix it, then you don't need to be a landlord. 
The plumbing was fine. I refuse to fix it when you're living in my house for free. You're wrong about that part. I'm going to take you to court for any damages to my house, you say to her. How long had she not been paying rent by October 31st? The last time she paid rent was August 25th. And that was for August 1st? That was that was for go, September. That goes to September 25th. To September. 25th. So then you give her notice September 17th, and that's it. That's she stopped paying she rent. Stopped paying so rent. she didn't pay October, and wh how, when did she finally leave? December 15th. So she didn't pay October, November, or December? That's correct. All right. Now, when she left in December, what propelled her to leave? Uh, Court? The U.S. Marshal came and made her, came and locked the her The U.S. Out. Marshal actually came? You pushed I, it that far? I had to pay, pay for that. Uh, we went to court, and she did not make an agreement to, to move. The, the judge gave her 33 more days to live there, and then gave Why? me. Why? She came into the courtroom, uh, probably seven months pregnant, yeah. with a bed bug in a container, that, right. and tried showing it to the judge, and the okay. judge said she didn't want to see it. If you knew that a judge had given you an additional 33 days, why couldn't you do what the, the judge asked? The apartment wasn't ready until December 15th. Well, get yourself ready. Get, it see, wasn't that's me. the problem, is that you think that your problem has to be not your problem. No, no, Sometimes no. your problem is your problem. It's not other people's problem to cope with because you have a problem. Ma'am, I actually do have pictures too showing what the apartment looked like before she moved in. And Let the me way, see that. The way they look, the way it looked when she moved out. Let me see that. I never seen a uh, rug so dirty in my life. My buddy's a carpet cleaner. He cleaned all the rugs before she moved in. They were spotless before she moved in. Before. Wow, this is a really good picture. This shows what was covered and uh, how did it get this dirty? Traffic. <laughs> how much traffic was there in that place? Wow. I also have a receipt of what it cost to clean her when she moved to. Now, you're suing for September, October, November, December in this, but I think you just mean three months. So I think that you mean October, November, December. Yes, yeah, correct. Right. And you're suing for $700 in legal fees. What's that? Oh, uh, that's what I paid the lawyer. Prove with. it. Where is something that would be actual proof, like a lawyer's uh, bill that you paid and proof you paid it? Truth is, probably somewhere lost in my house. Okay. Uh, well, so I, then you understand. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, happy to oblige if you can just prove it. I just couldn't find it. That's okay. All. all right, we're done. We're done. We are so done. Stick a fork in me. We're done. Let's see. Miss Eckert, let's first talk about your lawsuit against him. You want your security deposit back. That's not happening. You want him to pay $851 for a new couch because you had bed bugs. I don't see any proof in this case that he caused your bed bugs. You want 800 and something dollars for your hospital bill and podiatry bills because you fell in, on steps that you never complained about until a year and a half later. That's not happening. You want, this one's my favorite though, $1,200 in lost wages because you didn't go to work how many days? I didn't go for two. The third day is when I ended up getting arrested, which got dismissed in criminal court. Wait, what'd you Everything. get arrested for? The, the door? That was, yeah, when I took the door off. You're which kidding I me, because the cops found the door in your, in your place. Which so they dismissed. arrested you. What happened with that criminal it case? It got dismissed. Okay, and the $1,200 okay, so $1, is because you lost your job? I lost my job because I didn't go to work for three days. The first two days is because I called the off, and the third day because I couldn't go because I had to spend the night in jail. The first, you literally the didn't go to work two, for two days because you couldn't take a shower? I tried. Like I said, I, nobody really wanted me to go over there because they okay. knew what the problem was. All right. Now. You want him to pay for two beds. That's not happening. You want him to give you $1,000 in pain and suffering. I'm surprised you're not pay, suing for pain and suffering. And you want him to pay for the exterminator costs. None of that is happening. On your counterclaim against her, you have zero proof of the lawyer's fee. You're not getting that. You would have if you brought proof. Um, and as for your lawsuit for the three months rent of October, November, December, I find sufficient proof of that, and I am awarding you $1,900. $150, pay the man. That's my verdict. Well, she sued for stepping in feces and other other things too, but uh, didn't win the case. Uh, step up here. What, what's uh, what's your reaction to this outcome? Here? Oh, it's fine. Um, I mean, she. I really didn't get to show her any evidence. The, um, what, what do you do for a living that uh, you couldn't go to work? Without taking a shower. I work in an office building. Right. You got it has the big bug thing. Is that all cleared up now? That you still have that problem? Yes. Okay. All right. So what's what's your reaction? You went on the counter suit here. Some of what you sued for those three months of rent. Uh, I'm glad that the judge seen who she was, and uh, and I'm glad it's over. What have you learned about being a landlord here? I learned to screen the tenants a little better. <laughs> right. At least you took pictures before. Uh, Very yeah. good. 
Yeah, that was my wife's idea. She's, uh, she's, she's the smart, smart one. <laughs> Harvey? So here's the thing, Kurt. You have to prove a direct link between the landlord's duty and breaching that duty and damage that the tenant suffered. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Lachey Warren. She says she and the defendant were friends for seven years, and they planned on going to Miami for her 25th birthday. She bought plane tickets for the defendant. The girl promised to reimburse her and then backed out. She couldn't believe it. Now she's out the cost of the ticket and the cancellation fee, and that's why she's suing for the $288 she's owed. This is the defendant, Jessica Johnson. She says she told the plaintiff she would go on the trip if her boss would let her off from work. And next thing she knows, her friend buys the ticket. She never even fully agreed to go. Turns out her boss would not let her off work. Now the plaintiff wants her to pay for a ticket she never approved of in the first place? Come on. She's accused of tripping up a friend. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, these litigants were friends for years, and they planned to go to Miami to celebrate the plaintiff's 25th birthday. But the defendant never paid her share. Now, the defendant says her boss wouldn't let her off work, and the plaintiff jumped the gun. It's the case of your trip. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, okay, Lachey Warren, yes. you are suing your, I guess, former friend, Jessica Johnson, for $288 that you believe she owes you for airline tickets that you purchased for her after, according to you, clearing with her. You say you don't owe it because she didn't clear it with you. Let me hear what happened. That's correct. So um, March 11th, I had booked tickets for Jessica and I. What days? Um, April 2nd to April 5th. Okay. Which is a sign. Well, originally it was going to be the 31st through the 4th or some right. other day. Yeah, it was going to be like that with me and my other friends, but Jessica couldn't go those days. She told me, and I have it, you know, the document right. that she said she can go between the 2nd and the 5th. Okay. So from there on, me and her just was planning. So the other girls bailed. This is a trip for your birthday. For my birthday, my 25th birthday. Okay. So the other girls ended up not being able to go, and... Um, the two of you are still texting back and forth and trying to plan it, and then you come up with Miami. Yes, All right. that's correct. Good choice. <laughs> and, uh, and so what, according to you, was the plan? The plan was that me and Jessica were booking the tickets. I was telling her the prices, which I have here, if you want to see. And we was texting, you know, back and forth about how much it was going to be. What I said to her was like, the tickets was $240 because I explained to her it would be cheaper if we get um, buy a one-way and a ticket there and then buy one coming back. How can that be? How it can was be 221 wh What she had first told me all together with the rest Oh, well, yeah, no, but you guys couldn't get your act together. That, yeah, no, that's that, how it that, works, that, folks. The 220, it's 221 and then everybody's doing no, like, you know, the 221 Bo Curly and Larry until the 221 goes to 500. And then all of a sudden the trip that would have been great at 221 would have had 100 people going, everything's great, now it's 500. Now people don't really want to go there. So badly so according to you according to her she says that you gave her the green light I never gave her the green light like that Sunday we talked about um, the trip and I did let her know like okay well those days the second and the fifth they do work for me but it's contingent upon me getting the time off of work but she said she had looked up some ticket that was 190 and I was like okay well if it, the tickets 190 go in there that works but keep me posted the next text message I'm getting is oh I booked the ticket for 240 and I had this message where I'm like huh 240 I never told you to book a ticket for 240, let alone book a ticket, period, because I said to keep me posted before you do anything. Okay. By the way, what ended up happening? You asked for the time off. Yes, I did ask for the time off, but the person who I usually switch with couldn't switch with me, so I just couldn't go at all. But um, after I told her I couldn't go, I did let her know. She gave me a number to the airline people because she wanted to change the name on the ticket because she wanted to get a refund on the ticket. So I called the people myself and asked them, and they did tell me, no, that you cannot get a refund, that the ticket is in my name. If I try to change anything, it's now, you got to pay $200 to change it, which is now the ticket's worth $63. What airlines is this? Southwest? No, it was U.S. Air Airlines. Okay, well, okay. But, so yeah. you would have to pay a $200 change fee? Yes. But then what you say in your complaint that you had to pay a $25 fee Cancel for what? Cancellation fee. Oh, wait, cancellation? Fee. Yeah. Did you do it through a, a travel agent? Yes. That's the problem when you go through a third party, whether it's Expedia or a travel agent or whoever else, to book airline tickets. And the airlines, when you need to do something, goes, don't come to us. 
go through the third party. All right, now you find this out and you say, well, maybe you feel guilty or whatever out of friendship. It's her 25th birthday coming up. You then end, to end up telling her, I'll pay 190. Correct. And then begins a barrage. Show me, uh, <sighs> so who wants to show me their telephone? I do. So first let's look at the communications that would lead her to believe that she should buy the tickets. Was she jumping the gun or were you giving her the impression it was okay? On March 8th, she sends you a text saying, send me your birth date, and you send it to her. All right. Then she says, I need at least 150 to book the flights. And then you say the following phrase, I can't give anything until Friday. Mm -hmm. That kind of sounds like you're in. I really appreciate you coming with me for real. The second till the fifth is that good. Answer, yes, that works. Are those the official days so I can put my time in at work? She answers, that's the day I want. Then she sends you a picture of a really pretty birthday outfit. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is asking a lot for everybody to relocate for your birthday, yeah. but you really want to do a nice, fun thing and have a memorable day. And, and she's the one person who's hanging in there, right? Mm -hmm. The one person who's hanging in there. And then on March 11th, this is fascinating to me. <laughs> on March 11th at 11.25 a.m., she says, so I got the tickets for 240 a piece. Plus taxes, so they're not even 240, they're more than that, they're two, I guess that's a 263. Mm -hmm. We can get the other ticket this week. You respond, huh, 240 for just one way? So she does seem surprised. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you say is, well, I'll know tomorrow if my time was approved for the trip. And she had said, I have to put in for my time. Mm -hmm. But when she says, I'll know tomorrow if the time was approved for my trip, you respond, well, okay, the tickets are bought. I just have to get the other one. So the breakdown is this, that you assume she can go and she assumes she can go. And you know she's got to get permission from work, so you know it's a possibility she can't go, but you go buy the tickets because she says, yeah, that sounds good. And yeah, and here we are. So defendant sends a text saying, I can't pay anything till Friday. Does that sound like somebody who um, has already committed to the trip? Yes. They don't say it that way. They don't say, I won't pay you till Friday, I, I, I'm in, but they say, I, I can't pay you. Is that somebody who clearly has committed? I can pay you, that means they are halfway committed to that. They're halfway committed? Yes, yes. I think they're full way committed. Uh, going inside the courtroom. I know nobody wanted the price to keep going up, but right. sometimes you just gotta wait and, 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 and find out if it's, because otherwise, this is what happens, this, which is way more expensive. Ha, where, did you spend your 25th birthday in Miami? No. And your good friend is no longer your good friend? No, we're and just- And you're out 500 and something though? This is what happens when you jump the gun. Neither of you waited until you heard from the boss about whether she could take the time off. So but I, I think you're entitled to something, but I don't see why you were so indignant when the one friend who was gonna go with you said, I'll pay you $190, and I don't see why you wouldn't pay her $190 plus a $25 cancellation fee. It goes because deeper she starts to like our relationship. Stop talking. Answer me. <laughs> because after she found out I couldn't go, then she starts threatening me. Very nasty. You, nasty, yes. nasty texts <laughs> about I work hard for my money and, and you I'll, did this. I'll come to your front door. If we're supposed to be friends, she offered. She said I'll go. So I thought she was being I never genuine. Said, I'll Stop go. talking, both of you. <laughs> Because it looks pretty clear that you did say, give her the green light because you thought it was going to be okay, I'm going to order you to pay what I think was the green light, which is just the, the 190 and the $25 of the cancellation fee. That's $215 that I'm going to order you to pay. And that means that you get the ticket. But I want to make sure, and I realize it's only $63 to the ticket, but you should get the value. That's, that's because you made that mistake. You made a bigger mistake than she did. Her mistake was innocent. But I have to tell you, after reading your text back and forth, I really think that you went about this in a very nasty, nasty way. Saying things like, you ruined my 25th birthday. She did not ruin your 25th birthday. You ruined your 25th birthday if you allowed something like this to ruin a birthday. Well, if you know our no, history, I don't. I'm not inviting you to speak. I'm inviting you to listen. Okay, I'm in the I'll middle of to talking you. to you. Look at me. How old are you? 25. Okay. I am more than double your age. Mm -hmm. Friends have come and gone. I know exactly which ones are gonna stick around, mm -hmm. okay? But it's really sad if after knowing somebody for over a decade and being so close to them that you wanna spend your 25th birthday with them and travel with them, you would allow 
what in essence turns out to be a dispute over $60 to forever sever your friendship with her. Sometimes money costs too much. This is one of those sometimes. Verdict for the plaintiff in the amount of $215. That's my judgment. Okay. This is the defendant out of the courtroom here. Uh, minus one friendship. All right. How do you feel about this? I mean, it is what it is. I didn't think I was not going to pay anything. I'm happy that it's really over. She got her money. But for the record, I never said I could really go with her. But it's over. <laughs> Are you going to miss your old friend? I mean, she was a good friend, but they come and they go. It sucks it happens like this, but I mean. What are you going to do with this ticket now? I'm going to go to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and you come out on the, on the winning end, at least in, in the legal sense. You feel like a winner or you feel like it's cost you too much? Well, I, it, it still cost me a lot, but at the end of the day, I got my money. But if people what did you lose? History, what did you I, lose? I lost. Basically, I have to pay $200 for a cancellation fee. And, uh, well, to me, I have best friends, so she was never considered a best friend. She was my close friend. Did you get a little nasty? Yeah, of course. It's my money. I work hard for my money. Mm -hmm. so, Harvey? You know, I don't want to throw a lot of legalese around, but this is actually called detrimental reliance. There's actually even a fancier word, which I won't use, but it means that somebody, if they have a right to reasonably rely on something you say and they take action as a result and it hurts them, you're going to be on the hook. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Victoria Zapola. She says she bought a 1998 Ford Taurus wagon with 173,000 miles on it from the defendant and was shocked when she brought it to her mechanic and he told her it was no good. The brake lines were installed illegally. The car was unsafe and undrivable, and the defendant has some nerve putting her and her kids in danger by selling her a piece of junk. She's suing for every penny of the $1,100 she's out and thinks she will walk out into the hall the victor today. This is the defendant, Denzel Williams. He says the plaintiff looked at the car twice, test drove the car, negotiated the price down and bought it. A week later, she calls him and says she doesn't like the car anymore and wants to return it. Huh? She loved the car and bought it. Now it's hers. He's accused of unloading a lemon. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a 98 Ford Taurus with 173,000 miles on it. Can't believe that the car ended up being a junker. But the defendant says, plaintiff bought it fair and square. It's the case of the Taurus with plenty of signs. Victoria Sapola, yes. you are suing Denzel Williams for $1,100. 900 of it money you gave him for a car that you want to return, and 200 of it tax registration and plates. What happened? Well, basically, I bought the car from them on the 9th. I found the ad on Craigslist, and they were selling it for $900, and I needed a car. Do you have the Craigslist ad? Yes, I do. Okay, let me see it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, 1997 Ford Taurus wagon. Odometer, 170. I presume that means 70,000. 170,000. Yes. Well, that's why it was a cheap buy, you know? Yeah. Okay. But we have a saying, my grandmother used to always say, lo barato sale caro. The cheap comes out expensive. It sure does. <laughs> okay. So that day I had contacted them and they said it's somebody else was looking at it first come first serve. So I brought my mechanic with me to go see and she f I was outside the house and she told me she'll be out and then 10 minutes later she called and said she's actually not home. So I ended up dropping him off going home. Later that night around 6.37 they called back and said you can come look at it now and I was like why not? Might as well just take a look at the car. But at that point my mechanic couldn't come because he was at home I'm sure. So I brought her with me. We went to look at the car and- Why'd um, you bring her? Does she know cars or just because she's your friend? Uh, both. Okay. Yeah, so we both went. Um, we test drove the car. Well, she test drove the car. Everything seemed fine. I told them that I would buy it. And You didn't uh, want to wait for your mechanic to see it the next day? Well, I did, I did let him see it the next day. 
But no, they, I mean they, before buying it. Well, yeah, they were rushing me through it because oh, they said rushing the, you through it. The money's in your pocket. You don't have to release it. Other people were looking at the car, and I needed ah, it immediately. Okay, but that's different from them rushing you through it. Yeah. You were rushing you through it because you wanted it. Exactly. All right. So you buy it that night. Is there any paperwork associated with the purchase? Um, yes, I just have. Yeah, I see all the paperwork. Sure. How about you? Do you have any paperwork associated with the purchase? Yes. All right. Is this um, the contract that you signed? Yes. Okay, and yours also says sell as is. Yes. Do you have the title that he gave you? No, um, DMV confiscates the old title and sends you a new title. And the new one came with the lien on it. And if you see the Craigslist Did the old ad, one have a lien on it? It, it did have the lien on it, but I didn't, I didn't know that. Didn't you look at it? Um, yes, but I didn't, I didn't understand really what, he basically told me if you pay $20 that it'll be taken care of. Whose lien was that? Was that a loan you had on it? No, I buy it from somebody. He said he, he buy it with the lien. He said check. Okay, everybody's got a lien. Is anybody paying the bank? I don't get it. That's no, what a lien means, that the no, bank is owed money. No, I check it, no money on it. Okay, did you, is that what you told her? I told her before she buy the car. I said, this car, I buy it with a lien on it. Mm -hmm. It's a 97 car. Okay, so the paper you got said lien, and according to, did you say what's a lien? Yes, I asked him, I said, what is this? And he said, oh, don't worry about it, it's just a lien, it's all paid off. And if you pay $20 when you register the vehicle, they'll remove uh, it and it won't be on your new title. Okay, and then what happened? And then, it sure was on my title, and they said well, that. Well, did you pay the $20? Did no, Did you show wouldn't. proof that the, that the loan had been paid off? See, it's a little more of a hassle than that. And there's an actual legal procedure that needs to be followed. The DMV had just told me, basically, that he has to remove it, that I can't do anything about it because it is in his name. No, it's not in his name, and yes, you can do something about it. And the Craigslist advertisement says title status clear, if you see. Okay. Title status clean. Why would you print on your Craigslist as clean when there's a lien on it? Would you buy a car with 173,000 miles? Depending on how much, oh uh, no. Okay, let's say uh, $800, would you buy the car? Uh, say no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. I was the one who posted. Who are you to him? I'm his daughter-in-law. Okay. But then he told her, that. Yeah, I mean, she's testifying that before the sale, you knew that, that it yeah. said lean, right? Yes. Yeah. I sure do. Well, we got to figure out if that's a problem or not a problem. Because basically, you make a representation to her that it's not a problem. It's a $20 issue. Yes, that's Okay, well, that better be true. Because if not, then, then you can't do what you did. You know, you've got a bunch of, of um, problems with the car that you don't like. What are the problems? Oh, my goodness. I was getting off an exit ramp to work, and the steering completely went. I thought I was going to crash the car. And it turns out his son is a mechanic, so he must have doctored it to make it make the sale. My, it's got a ton of problems with the vehicle. Uh, name what the problems are. It's just structural body rot. There's illegal brake lines on the car. There's loose and rotten exhaust pipe. There's a leak. The brake lines What are, does illegal brake lines mean? It means that there's compression fittings on the rear steel brake line, and it is illegal to use the compression fittings on brake lines. They must be double flare with unions to connect the brake lines. Like okay. I said, his son is a mechanic. How long did you own the vehicle? I own it from 2009. Well, that's a long time. And your son is a mechanic? Yes. Did he do work on this vehicle? Yeah, he do work, but we never fit no brake lines. I just changed brakes. You just changed what? The brakes, the front brakes and the back brakes. The pads, you mean? The pads. But I never fixed. Right. I, I don't. Let me tell you the things I care about and the things I don't care about. I don't care that you bought a car without a mechanic. That's on you, not me. I don't care that there's problems with the car on an as-is sale. That's on you, not me, not him. The only thing I care about if, is if there is a misrepresentation. If you didn't know there was a lien, that's a fraud. But the essence of a fraud means someone's tricking you. If you're not tricked, it's not a fraud. You knew when you bought the car that there was a lien, and if you didn't make it your business to find out what that meant, that's on you, not on anybody else, because it was in bold letters in four different places on that title. So there's no fraud, because you weren't duped. Right. All right, I'm going to give you a month. Mm -hmm. If you need more time, contact the court. Right. If it turns out that you can provide to the court something from the bank saying money's owed, I will rescind this sale and he will return your money. Right. Okay, good luck, folks. Thank you. So the sale's back on hold for the moment, so step on in here right next to me right here. What's your next move? Um, to send the letter and find out what's going on with the lien. 
Mm -hmm. All right, what do you expect is gonna happen here? I'm suspecting that there's gonna be money owed. All right, well, we will see. Yeah, we'll right. find out. All right, you have your homework to do. Get to it. All right, so step on in here. Uh, you heard what the judge ruled, what do you think of that? I think she need a free car and get back her money. Is there money owed on the car? I buy the car with the lien. I show her before I sell her Are the you car. worried about what might happen when she writes this letter and finds out? I know that I don't have no lien on it. I you might it. get this car back. Okay. You want it? Yes, it's a good car. <laughs> Harvey. Okay, Kurt, well, it turns out there was no lien on the car, so she had to keep the car and pay the dough. Uh, word to the wise, 173,000 miles. You are playing with fire.